This is the great trumpet from the 1885 William Denman organ that was in St. Michael of Belfry's church in York, just under the shadow of the Minster, where Guy Fawkes was famously baptised. Uh, we're doing a restoration of the organ, and it's been going into the church, the largest parish church in York, St. Lawrence's. Um, the organ had had several um, periods of work, um, and one or two changes which we're trying to reverse, particularly from the tonal side of things. There was um, a, a repitching of the organ, and there was a new bottom C, which you can see a zinc resonator here, um, the rest being spotted metal and running onto pipe metal once we get to Tennessee. Um, Abbott Smith did this work in 1920s. They also put harmonic trebles onto the reeds, which was the sort of thing that was done in that, that period. The idea was to, to, to get more power into the treble um, octaves of the reeds where they tended to sort of tail off. That was at the expense of tone. So um, a harmonic reed stifles the, uh, the vowel almost of, of the reed. So it goes from a sort of an, an at vowel to an op vowel. Uh, so what we decided um, within the restoration of the organ was to, to bring back the tone as far as, as best as we could. So we've taken the harmonic treble pipes away. Um, we've, uh, we've, we've remade following the scale of the pipe below it uh, and, and the voice and style and everything else um, with, with um, the, same, the same metal. Um, so the scale follows on, the slotting follows on. It's the original shallots and the original toms. Um, and so we've got a nice bright treble here. Yes, it's not quite as loud in the, in the treble, but actually the character of the stop has been returned. So uh, what we've been doing here now, um, apart from re re getting the sound of the treble back in, is just going through the regulation of the, of the stop. And I found one or two notes that um, just aren't quite right. So we've got Tennessee sharp here, which has got a little bit of a growl on it, as opposed to that one, which is a bit smoother. And this E here. So what we do on the, on the voicing machine, as well as making sure that the pipes are speaking correctly, not too quick, not too slow, is that they will tune a little bit sharp, a little bit flat, still keeping a, a bit of a tonality, but also making sure there are no little growls or um, voicing uh, anomalies. So um, this, this stop here, um, uh, note here I should say, um, the first thing to do whenever we're voicing and, and checking for reads is actually to see whether the tongue is rolling down, can you see that okay, is rolling down the shallot properly. Um, so we hold it up against the light and just to see whether that's a, a, a nice curve and also to see whether there's any dirt in there and that could also cause that could also cause this rattle. So carefully taking the spring back, I'm just going to take a tool here, which I put between the shallot and the tong. These are homemade tools. You can't you can't buy voicing tools in the shop. Um, you have to make everything. So this is this is a, a plaster of small tool, which has been which has been um, filed down and made smooth. So I can get this in between the shallot and the tong. Get my thumb on there. Add some pressure. And if I look down here, I can see there's a little tiny flat towards the end. You probably won't be able to see it on the, on the camera, but there's a little flat here. And that's almost certainly what's giving the, the little rasp on that note. So if I just put a little pressure here, using my thumb just to curve it up a, lot, a little, and then I'll go at the back as well. The curve at the back of the tongue is just as important as the curve on the front. The curve on the front will help to give it that nice trumpety sound. The curve at the back will mean that it's, it, it tunes well. You can tune it flat, you can tune it sharp. I'll check that against the light, and that looks better to me. So, put the spring back in, pull it back, and then we'll pull it back, pull it back in the socket, and we'll see what happens. With any luck, it'll be all right. tune sharper, so I've got that curve nice at the back, which it will, it's almost, it's almost on the next note. So I'm happy 
happy with that one. We'll have a look at this C-sharp. It's probably the same sort of thing here. So I'll have a look at the top first. And I can see exactly the same thing just on the end here, underneath the weight. There's just a little bit of a flat and that's causing that rattle. And again, the same process. My little tool under here. Just gently, I'm not putting too much pressure on, just enough. If there's too much curve on the end of the tongue, then the note will probably sound okay, but it'll be slow, which is not what we want. Particularly in the tenor of the bass octave, we need nice, prompt, crisp notes. Same thing again. And the weight that's been added onto the end of here is really just to sort of check um, the, the speech um, and to make sure it's not too not too loud and not too raspy down in the in, in the bass. This is the chorus read. It needs to it needs to have a bit of um, roundness um, in, the, in the tenor of the bass. We don't want it to sort of go off like a car horn. Try that again. There we go. So that's just a little demonstration, voicing demonstration, of um, and, and how I just you know, manipulate the tongue just to get rid of any of those sort of anomalies. So I'll just give you a little uh, tune on it, just to, to set you on your way. Mm -hmm. 